Chapter 4 Transcendental Knowledge Spiritual knowledge is known as Shruti, that which is heard. In bygone ages, people would hear such knowledge, remember it and assimilate it and perfectly communicate it to the next person without any adulteration. Chapter 4 is entitled Transcendental Knowledge for it is this knowledge which outlines how one can establish their divine connection with God. The famous Vedic aphorism thus encourages, aim to see God through the ears rather than the eyes. Evam parampara praptam imam rajarashiyo vidu sakale neha mahata yoganashta parantapa This supreme science was thus received through the chain of disciplic succession and the saintly kings understood it in that way. But in course of time, the succession was broken and therefore the science as it is appears to be lost. E stands for eternal education. A for accurate understanding, R for removing reaction, S for sacrifice and E for eternal education. Verses 1 to 10. Just as every gadget comes with an instruction manual, this entire universe comes with the guidelines which enlighten one about its purpose and function. Such guidelines are found in the ancient scriptures which contain knowledge of divine origin imparted at the time of creation. Krishna explains how this eternal educational system was originally set up by him. This system perpetuates in the universe through qualified and saintly persons who impart a spiritual knowledge to the masses in a dynamic, relevant and practical way. Thus, the material creation is essentially a university where we rediscover our relationship with God. As the creator and maintainer, Krishna periodically appears in the world to re-inject spirituality, remove materialistic influences and ensure the smooth functioning of the universe. Verses 11 to 15 A. Accurate Understanding Most people know something about religion and something about God, but their understanding can often be quite hazy and confused. However, when transcendental knowledge is received through the eternal education system, one gains an accurate understanding. In three verses, Krishna clears up three common misunderstandings of Eastern spirituality. Verse 11 addresses the misconception that all spiritual paths lead to the same destination. Krishna explains that while there is unity in diversity, there are also different gradations of spiritual elevation. Verse 12 addresses the misconception that Eastern scriptures talk of polytheism and the worship of many gods. Krishna re-emphasizes the monotheistic stance that there is only one God. Verse 13 addresses the concern that the caste system is unfair and exploitative. Krishna outlines the true criteria and purpose of such classification. The next section, verses 16 to 24, takes care of R, removing reactions. While transcendental knowledge helps one to clear up philosophical doubts, it also helps one to clear up their karmic bank balance. Karma is a universal law of nature. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. While bad karma is obviously undesirable, Krishna further explains that even good karma should be avoided since it also binds one to material existence. Beyond good and bad are activities performed on the spiritual level, that is action which yields no reaction and ultimately frees one from the anxieties and such entanglements of this world. Such action is known as a karma. The next section, verses 25 to 42, deal with S or sacrifice. In order to acquire, understand and realize transcendental knowledge, one must make a sacrifice. While material knowledge is dependent on caliber, spiritual knowledge is dependent on character. Sacrifices help refine one's character so they become eligible to achieve this knowledge. One of the biggest sacrifices is to relinquish one's pride by humbling submitting oneself before the bona fide Guru. By faithful service and sincere inquiry within such a relationship, the heart becomes a fertile ground for spiritual knowledge to blossom. Tad vidhi pranipatena 
परिप्रश्ने 